Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things and let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. Amen. Hello and welcome to this short act of worship for Sunday the 24th of May, a day known to many Methodist people as Aldersgate Sunday. More on that later. Well, this worship is coming to you from Emmanuel Church in Eastbourne. Lots of people are following our daily devotions online through the website. Some are having it printed as well. And we're going to keep those daily devotions going every single day. So thanks to the great team who are putting all of those together and who are helping us reflect and pray at this time. In this worship this morning, may God bind us all together whether we are worshipping through uh, watching this service on YouTube, uh, through the church website, listening to it or following the printed sheet. May God bind us together as one people as we open our hearts in worship and humble devotion before him this day. Let's begin with an opening prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we praise you for your creative power this day. And we praise you, Lord, and we give you thanks for this world and for this universe around us. Signs of beauty and life that we see in so many places that speak of your creative and wondrous power. We thank you that you sustain this world by your love, enabling us to overcome difficulties and showing us that your love is always present and with us. We praise you, Lord, for your forgiving love this day. We thank you for your love that we see in the life of Jesus Christ, our Lord, the one in whom your love, Lord, was fully revealed and seen on the cross and by the power of the resurrection. We thank you, Lord, that through Jesus Christ, all of our sins are wiped clean. And your love for us is stronger than any guilt or shame or regret that we may experience. That it is in you and you alone salvation is to be found. And we praise you, Lord, this day for your inspiring power among us. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, which moves us and shapes us together as one people. May our worship be inspired May we reflect upon the truths that you seek to give us and may we humbly follow you by following Jesus Christ our Lord, loving and serving in the world as he did. These and all of our prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We have one reading this morning from uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 12. Uh, all about Jesus being quizzed by the scribes and the Pharisees. Charlie's going to read this for us this morning. Thanks, Charlie. Today's reading is from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 37. The first commandment. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You should love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and beside him there is no other and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbour as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Charlie, for reading that gospel passage for us. So, as I said earlier, this Sunday is Aldersgate Sunday, 
And this is the day on which Methodists remember John Wesley's experience on the 24th of May back in 1738. Famously, his journal entry that evening read, about a quarter before nine, while one was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation. Famous words of John Wesley there. And contrary to popular opinion, Methodist uh, local preachers and ministers are not required to know the whole of John Wesley's journals word for word. And also, contrary to popular local opinion, I may have been raised by a Methodist historian, but I was not required to recite excerpts from John Wesley's journal at 4.30 in the morning when he would have got up either. So what was John Wesley's experience that warm early summer evening? Would we call it a conversion? Well, not really. He was already a Christian. By that time, he was already a member of the Holy Club at Oxford, as they were called, known for their Bible reading, their fasting, preaching, acts of charity. Was it a calling that he experienced that evening? Well, he was already a clergyman. He was ordained as a young man in 1725. So it wasn't really a conversion experience, not really a calling um, experience either. Whatever it was, it was certainly a deep inner experience for Wesley, and he simply recalls that he felt his heart was strangely warmed. He felt a way that he had never quite felt before, and it was a way that would guide his life for the rest of his days. He had an assurance of God's love for him, and that would stay with him and sustain him in his ministry and in his whole life. In these days of uh, lockdown with restrictions hanging he heavy over us all, uh, many of us are missing the physical gathering, especially on Sunday mornings, of coming together, uh, worshipping together as one people, praying, singing together, fellowship that we would share together. And as much as we have every right to miss this uh, with great longing, perhaps on Aldersgate Sunday, we should be reminded that actually it is the human heart which is so often the place of God's activity. It is the human heart where God is at work, where God's whisper is to be heard, sometimes breathing words of peace to, the, to those in need of rest uh, or words of solace to those who are troubled. The human heart is also the place where God may spark in us feelings of anger at the injustices or cruelty in the world and around us, or the place where we may feel compassion uh, for uh, the people who are victims of great suffering or discrimination. Now, you and I may well be worshipping now uh, at home um, in our garden through the TV, radio, through iPads and phones. But actually, time and time again, it is the human heart where God is to be found. In Mark's Gospel that Charlie read, um, Mark includes this fabulous story of Jesus being questioned about the commandments. And Jesus refers to Deuteronomy 6, uh, verse 5 in his answer, when he says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Very profound wisdom uh, and truth are to be found in this ancient text. Words of devotion, words of obedience and words of great feeling as well. The scriptures provide for Jesus an answer to the questioning teachers who are quizzing him and it's also a passage full of wisdom and truth for us today. For if the human heart is the place where God's love is to be found, then somehow it seems right for the human heart to be the place then from which uh, our love for God and our neighbour emanates and flows. And of course, I don't mean here in any sense that the heart is uh, in terms of a physical organ, but simply in the sense of heart, meaning our deepest being, um, our inner self, uh, our soul, um, if you would prefer. We are unable to gather as we would like, you and I, with one another and with the community around us. But God will continue to be at work in the way that God is always at work. God is present with us and within us. 
in all of our moments, uh, whether they are joyful or hard. And the more we open ourselves to his loving presence, the more we will find ourselves longing to serve him by loving those we live our lives alongside. In Paul's letter to the Romans, he wrote uh, a great verse, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Good reminder, perhaps, that Pentecost is coming soon. And may our hearts, may they always be ready to receive that which God seeks to give us. May our hearts be always ready to receive and also to give the love of God. Amen. Now Claire's going to lead us in some prayers. Thank you, Claire. Let's pray together. Loving God, place your love within our hearts. We pray for those whose heart is full of joy, for those who give thanks for health, happiness, new arrivals and new opportunities. Loving God, place your love within our hearts that we may share joy. We pray for those whose heart is full of sadness and longing, for those who mourn a loved relative or friend, for those who miss physical touch and company, for those who feel regret. Loving God, place your love within our hearts that we may weep with those who weep and reach out with compassion to those feeling alone. We pray for those whose heart is full of hope and possibility. We pray especially for those who work for peace and justice, those who work for the health of the sick, those who care for our most vulnerable people, those searching for cures and vaccines. Loving God, place your love within our hearts that we may give thanks for the gifts of others and share our gifts with the people of this world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord of all, who prayed, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Claire, for leading our prayers today. Well, as this week goes on, we'll have more daily devotions on the church website. And next Sunday morning, there'll be another short act of worship on Pentecost, uh, the day in which the church remembers the gift of the Holy Spirit given by God to inspire and to strangely warm our hearts in so many different ways. So until then, have a good week ahead and may God richly bless you. The words of Colossians to finish. The gospel keeps bringing blessings and is spreading throughout the world, just as it has among you ever since the day you first heard about the grace of God and came to know it as it really is. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us and those whom we love this day and evermore. Amen.